Morgan has very much limited my role tonight to introducing her so uh, that I wouldn't ramble on. Uh, and uh, so uh, to, to keep things moving, I'll introduce Morgan Trainer, our budget manager, uh, to walk us through tonight's uh, public hearing. So, like you said, my name's Morgan Trainer. I uh, appreciate y'all coming out tonight. I'm going to be uh, very brief and, and, and open it up. Y'all are obviously here because you have something to say, and, and we want to have plenty of time uh, to hear from, from everybody that, that wishes to speak. I will point out that we do have some um, staff here tonight uh, that can help answer questions. Uh, you know, the capital improvement plan, I'll, I'll cover in some, some very brief detail uh, what it entails, but a lot of it has to do with... Um, street reconstruction and, and engineering projects so we have our engineer clinton bailey here to answer any questions uh, we also have a representative from the water department the interim assistant uh, director kevin krueger and um steve mahaffey is uh, our budget analyst senior he'll be taking notes and so we can report back to the city council what we're hearing tonight it's really important that we get lots of public input um, all of that recorded accurately and turned over to um, to our decision makers and so we want to make sure that we can get um, those notes turned over to them so um, um, steve may follow up with you afterwards make sure he got your name right or make sure he got your your, your substance of what you were saying correct so we appreciate you uh, coming out tonight um, this is being aired live for those folks who couldn't make it out here tonight and it will be aired on channel 17 uh, I'm not telling you that to to deter you if you're if your camera shy I, I, I apologize it's just uh, we want to be able to impact as many people as possible because of that we've got everybody on microphones so Clinton's on a mic and there's a microphone here um, off to this side we'd ask that you get up come to the microphone state your name and speak clearly into the mic uh, that way everybody at home can hear it and uh, everybody watching from channel 17 uh, can hear what you're saying so uh, we'll remind you of that as we go through the night but with that uh, I'll go ahead and get started I know there's a few of y'all still signing in I appreciate everybody signing in we like to have a good head count of um, you know what worked to get, get the word out that that we had this meeting but I'll, I'll go ahead and get started with a few things as, as people are still arriving so this is kind of our calendar of events, uh, what brought us to today. Um, we are having our public meetings, of course, today. Uh, we've had uh, met with the, the CIP committee, uh, gone over the submissions from the divisions, and had some discussion with city council already, very, very early um, discussion. So uh, next we'll have more discussion with city council and eventually adopt this, this capital improvement plan. So our, our, our capital improvement is so important to us that it's actually in the city charter. That's our you know, highest governing authority and, and tells us what we need to do and how to, how to do our job. So um, what's, in, what's in the capital improvement plan ultimately, uh, what's online as a draft, and uh, I do have a few printouts for those of you all that may not have internet access. If, if you want, we can get you those copies. But um, we have a summary list of, of all the capital improvement projects. We have the long-term goals of this community. Um, we have cost estimates, time schedules, et cetera, of each individual project, um, uh, estimated annual operating cost. That means after we do it, what's it going to cost every year to, to, to maintain it, and uh, methods to, to measure the outcome or the performances of those projects and how the plan helps sustain this community. So that's really what this is about, is uh, reinvesting in the community. So when we talk about capital improvement projects, uh, these are large projects. These are, these are land. These are parks. These are streets. Um, they're, they usually require uh, more than six months to complete. So when you think about reconstructing a street, that, that meets the criteria. It has a lifespan of at least three years, and it has a total cost in excess of $25,000. You'll see projects that run the gamut from $25,000 to $120 million. So uh, that's kind of what's going on tonight. Of course, we're having this public meeting here right now tonight. Uh, we're going to have another one. If you know anybody that wanted to come but couldn't be here tonight, we're going to have a meeting uh, on Tuesday, February 12th at 6 p.m. at Lincoln Middle School and uh, we've been talking about them online and, and on radio and on TV but again if, if you know anybody that couldn't make it tonight we'd be glad for you to to pass the word so with that we'll move forward but I will um, each of you got a, a handout a summary um, page when you came in um, that has the list of, of a very rough list of uh, sorry a very brief summary list of what staff has submitted that they see as things that need to be done in the next five years. Um, 
And so since we're here to serve you, we're glad to hear your commentary on any of the projects on that list or any projects that are not on that list that you would request uh, a staff to research and, and consider adding to the plan. So d would anybody like to come on up to the mic and, and we'll get relevant people to, to answer your questions? <coughs> And as you come up to the mic, just remember, please state your name and speak clearly into the microphone. I appreciate it. Yes, uh, my name is Michael Bell, and I'm here with a few others. Uh, we are here to uh, represent the Martin Luther King Boulevard Street from, from 6th Street all the way to 29th. And we are looking at this list, and we would like to know if any of these improvements include us. And then if, if not, how will we go about getting some attention because we have uh, real serious street issues from one end of the street to the other. We have no sidewalks, curbs, and not l poor lighting in some areas near the chicken farm and other places. So uh, does any of this include us? And we do have, uh, along with some of the departments, have a uh, grant in process. And I was wondering if that grant, where, where we are in that granting process and if we can be added to this list. Sure, absolutely. I think it'd be uh, appropriate to turn that over to our engineer, uh, Clinton Bailey, and let him speak to um, that. Well, we have a number of streets that are on our uh, street rehabilitation list, and uh, Martin Luther King is on, on that list. We have a list of about 55 streets, most of the major thoroughfares in San Angelo that are not tech stop maintained, that we haven't rebuilt in the last five years are on a list that we hope we can fund projects ranging from major, rehabil major rehabilitation all the way down to what would be the major maintenance, like a mill and overlay project. Um, Martin Luther King is a really good example of a road that has deteriorated rapidly in the last couple of years. We're at the tipping point uh, with a lot of our roads in San Angelo, um, where you, you get to that point, you have that rapid decline in the condition of the roadway and the overall cost of um, then rebuilding that road gets much higher. So we're taking an overall look at all of our roadway infrastructure and trying to determine where all of these priorities lie. And I think MLK, Bell Street, will both be priorities, but we're looking at both of those uh, right now. Um, to answer your second question, we did apply for a transportation enhancement grant that would include sidewalks, curb ramps, potentially some lighting, some streetscape elements, that sort of thing along MLK. And we would hope to be able to make those improvements along with some roadway improvements. There are a lot of access issues up there. There's no curb and gutter in a lot of places, water stands. Um, the edge of the road gets beat out and the roadway itself is in b really bad shape and there's a lot of activity in that corridor and we want to promote that so that is an area that we're looking at very closely that is a, a project that is currently on the list where it will end up being ranked I can't tell you at this point but we're moving forward uh, last year we were successful in getting in front of the City Council and driving uh, streets to the top of the priority list in the CIP Unfortunately, we had a water crisis last year, so we had to concentrate on some other things. But uh, we're hoping to uh, have the opportunity to do the same jumping up and down this year as staff to try to start addressing some of these issues. Okay. So we still don't have a time frame? No, sir. Uh, I can't tell you a time frame. Um, first comes the plan, and then comes the funding. And we've been talking about funding for the last couple of years with our finance folks, and um, these projects are costly. The, um, the list of 55 streets, the overall cost associated with that is in the $100 million range. So again, prioritizing those top projects, making sure that we're taking care of our new infrastructure, uh, continuing to maintain the roads, that's all part of the overall picture that we're trying to, um, that we're trying to iron out here and, and really get moving. Okay. Well, we'd like some attention and because uh, we can attract businesses and it'll be a better quality of life for 
all those blocks of streets that are in there. Yes, so. sir. And as we get closer um, to doing these projects, especially the transportation enhancement grant projects where we have the sidewalks and curb ramps and those types of amenities, we'd love to meet with all the businesses out there. It's, it's uh, something that we typically do, get their input. So what we're building is what you like to see out there. What we're building um, meets, meets your unique requirements. Um, it's all going to be ADA accessible. We're going to make sure the, uh, the drainage is addressed. And like I said, I hope we can address the street. But um, we encourage your input in that, and we'll be soliciting that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> and just so we can report back to, to show uh, the public outpouring for this particular project, can I get a head count of how many people are here to speak to the MLK 6 to 29th Street? And if you'll hold your hand up, I'm just going to get a real quick head count. Okay, I'll count upwards of, of 35 to 40 people. And so we'll be glad to report that back. And if anyone has another Sorry. question about um, MLK uh, that's not along those lines that you'd like to discuss, feel free to do that at this time. Uh, I'm Father Sosa, pastor of St. Joseph. And uh, first of all, I would like to thank the city for uh, I've been there for two years. And, and it was very unsafe at the back of the church. But the city already took part of those situations, uh, safety situations situations and now we're working with the chicken farm and all the our brothers from the other denominations to to make MLK a better uh, living dignity in that area and we are very interested in the community's work and as you can see many of our uh, fellow friends here thank you for being here they're from other communities and they're cooperating with us just to see their community uh, in a better shape because it is really sad we cannot even walk I, I like to use a bicycle, but it's not really, uh, the two or three times it's very, very dangerous over there, and it's not really a good idea to even walk over there. So first of all, the thank you for the safety that you, that you offer uh, a few, I think a year ago there started police officers showing over there because it was on the weekends, I live there, and on the weekends it's, it's really, it was really noisy and dangerous. So. Uh, thank you, and, and thank you for all those who are here to represent MLK. Thank you. Thank you, and just a little bit more on the, uh, the grant application. What we're trying to achieve with that is connectivity across uh, the city from points of interest like the chicken farm through those neighborhoods to the downtown area to the improvements on the river. We have a project planned along the Red Arroyo. We're trying to tie all those things in, and we have sidewalks, um, handicap ramps, we have bike lanes, we're trying to connect to Chadburn south to the multimodal bus station into downtown, so we're really concentrating on that connectivity, those points of interest, connecting those to neighborhoods. Good evening, I'm Buzz Raspberry. Um, <coughs> I would like to some information on uh, how Transa could be incorporated into this also with uh, bus stops and ways that uh, our children that are waiting in the dark moments of the morning um, can have a little more safety out there. They're kind of standing on the edge of a very unimproved road, especially down by the, the chicken farm. Uh, no, no curbs or anything. It's kind of hit or miss out in that area. Uh, there is a lot of activity. Uh, needing uh, bus stops and so forth around the 18th and MLK area where uh, Wesley Trinity uh, United Methodist Church has their daily bread uh, soup lunch program and we have a lot of patronage there so there the transportation needs uh, for uh, folks up and down that corridor uh, need to be looked at also right and I do know that uh Transa has been in discussions with our Metropolitan Planning Organization, um, and we're looking at installing uh, somewhere around about a dozen bus stops around town in, in key areas. 
Uh, we're just beginning to talk about that. Uh, I know that we've already purchased or the M through the MPOs already purchased some of those materials and, and we're making plans for some of those installations. Hmm. Does anybody else have any specific questions about the MLK cord cord order or any of the other uh, projects? Hi, Deb Michaelavis, West Texas Organizing Strategy in reference to the MLK project. <coughs> what is it noted as on this sheet? It's a project that's out further than the five years was how it was proposed with staff. So it's and, not on here. And so it's in our, our future projects. We have um, a radar list, if you will, of items that probably um, that, that absolutely could be moved up. You know, let's let's put them in the five-year horizon, not further out, and, um, and and we'll make those those recommendations. So it's not in this summary sheet that you have here with okay. you because it's it's it was scheduled for further out. But all of that is is up for discussion. Thank you. So what I'm hearing on the MLK is we're concerned about the pedestrian traffic and safe travel and, and, and sidewalks and curb improvements and lighting, and you have note of all of that, Clinton? <coughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. Um, my name's Harry Thomas. I'm the president of the Fort Concho Board, so I'm going to change the subject. Uh, I know all of these, these individuals that came out want to talk about <clears throat> the improvements on the road, and I live on the east side of town, so I understand Bell Street is, is very good. What I want to talk about is what a great asset that we've got that the city has uh, in Fort Concho. And the number of visitors that we get from all over the United States, uh, we get them from all 50 states and all over the world that come every year. Uh, a number of the programs that we have at Fort Concho for the visitors are, are free of charge. Of course, we've got one of the best Christmas programs in the whole state uh, that, we, that we have visitors come and visit. We've had some items on the CIP list for about five years, and some of those items are getting to the spot where they're really, truly critical. Uh, those are the air conditioning needs and some structural needs. Uh, at some point in the near future, uh, we're gonna have to invest some money in those. And I'd like to see some consideration of some of those projects brought to the forefront so that we can do these now where it's not gonna cost us as much money down the road. Uh, I also understand that, uh, that there are a number of roads and, and, and other issues in this city that will always take precedent, and that's what's happened over the last five years. We needed those dollars in other places. But if we get some consideration of some of these things, what the Fort Concho Board is doing is want to try to leverage some of those dollars. We don't want to look at all of it coming from the city. We want to leverage some of those dollars from foundations and private individuals. So we want to work as a team so that we can put these things back in there. But if we get some consideration on some of these projects, uh, I think we can go forward and make the, uh, one of the best assets that, that this community has an even better place for us to, to have visitors come and visit. Thank you, sir. We'll make note of that and pass that on. Sure, can I get a head count of, of who's here to, to represent and support Fort Concho and, 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 and be in favor of, of those projects? Just your hands up. Perfect, thank you. <coughs> so this is certainly open up to, to any of the other projects you see on here. You'll see that there's a a variety from, from parks and recreation uh, to water utilities and um, civic events, for example, a fairgrounds um, improvements, a livestock barn, um, hilltop trail. There, there's a variety of things, and, and be sure that you're aware that there's, it is double-sided, the list that you have here. There's a total of uh, about 70 projects here um, submitted by project managers or absolutely projects that are not yet on this list that we're, that we're glad to research adding to the list. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I'm Ann West, and I'm Vice President of Friends of Fairmount, um, and we are here tonight, and we thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this forum, uh, to hopefully encourage uh, the implementation of or consideration of our phase one of our master plan. Uh, that would include the columbaria, 
and the uh, safety issue that we have with our front gate, our front entrance, excuse me. Um, there are several people, I mean, there, there are quite a few people. We've had accidents there. The safety issue is ongoing. Um, we feel like that needs to be addressed. Um, the columbarium, in the past 10 years, the trends towards um, cremains, burials has increased tremendously. We are pretty much behind the curve on that already. Lawn Haven has a columbaria. Uh, a lot, many of the churches have that as well. Um, we feel that to possibly continue the economic longevity of Fairmount Cemetery, that that is something that we certainly would love for this city to look at and possibly prioritize that um, going forward with the capital improvement plan. Great, thank you for your comments. Um, can I get a head count for how many people are here uh, in support of the uh, Fairmont Cemetery phase one improvements? Super, thank you. Good evening. My name is Eva Horton. I'm president of Fairmount Board of, Governor, Board of Directors, uh, and I'm here to speak on behalf of the board in support of what Friends of Fairmount has done in putting together this master plan. Uh, they went out and raised money on their own to pay for the master plan, and as you said earlier, first comes the plan, the uh, plan, and then we get to be on the list. We're on the list, but we have no funding recognized yet. Uh, Friends does plan to uh, raise portion of the funds themselves, but needs kind of a green light from the city to go ahead. And so we're hopefully going to get y'all to agree to push us up on the list and let us proceed with that, or let Friends proceed with that. Uh, there's quite a uh, when the Friends first started, over 400 people joined the organization. So there's a lot of folks behind that idea. And uh, like Ann said, you know, it's uh, the front gate is an issue. Columbarians are a wave of the future. We feel like this is very important. Uh, it's a part of San Angelo's history. Just about everybody that, uh, if you drive down Bryant Boulevard or go to Houston Heart or go to Shannon Hospital, those folks are buried at Fairmount Cemetery. So it's a reflection of our past and hopefully will be a big part of our future. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Hi, my name is Candace Brewer, and I'm also here with the Friends, Friends of Fairmont board. And I just want to echo what both Ann and Eva had said, and also just remind you that we represent 450 members, and we did not inform our, all of our membership because we didn't want to overwhelm you guys, but um, we do represent 450 members. Thank you so much. Thanks. So we do have a variety of um, uh, ways to, to review the CIP. Um, of course, like I said, I do have hard copy handouts tonight. So if anybody doesn't have internet access, uh, we can send that home with you. And, and if you do um, have the time to, to review it and, and, and look at it, uh, you can look at it online or with our hard copies. And what you'll see, this is an example, for example, that we're talking about uh, Fairmont Cemetery phase one improvements. And so um, it will have a brief description about what the project entails. Um, I, I'm, I'm grateful to, to the citizens that came and, and, and described that it does include um, a columbarium and um, wider, more attractive um, entrance and, and those kind of things. And so you'll see as you go through that list that there's a, a cost estimate, uh, there are potential funding sources identified. Um, and, and to echo what, what's been stated that, for example, under funding sources, which is a fancy way of saying how are we going to pay for it, um, that Friends of, Friends of Fairmont funding, uh, fundraising is an opportunity, and then the, the rest is, is to be determined, it, it is um, how would the city would um, would pony up some money or, or, or other funding sources. And then to meet our, our charter requirements, we do speak to um, 
what it would cost to maintain that those improvements, et cetera, on through this area. And then finally at the bottom, uh, a location. And so this is really important as you uh, browse through 70 projects, uh, having that location there is, is helpful to know um, uh, where these are all located. So that's uh, the, the product that we'll put out and, and have eventually uh, adopted by the city council. And come on up. If you, uh, is there anything we haven't touched on that anybody uh, came specifically to speak to? We have a variety of, of staff. Yes, do you have something? Sure, thank you. Forgive my froggy voice. <laughs> Uh, my name is Kat Rowalt, and in reviewing the 2013 to 18 capital improvement plan, I want to give voice as an individual, <laughs> I'm not here representing a group, um, for the need of a new police department. Um, on, the, on your CIP, it listed at about $25 million. You know, due to the discovery of the Shine, Klein, <laughs> Klein Shell, uh, oil field boom that's happening right now and the forecasted 20 to 30,000 people that are going to be coming into our community in the next year or so. If it takes 176 officers now for our current population, that means we're going to need another 35 to 50 officers. And there's absolutely nowhere for them to office because they are <laughs> maxed out at that building. So we're already behind the curve on that. And I understand that typically it takes about 18 months to fully train new cadets from the time they go into the academy until the time they've actually had their street time and their training there. And so we, I know we can't build a building in that time, but we definitely need to get started. San Angelo is such a unique and beautiful city. We've done wonderful things with the arts and our river and um, you know, we have incredible medical center and university and all these wonderful things that we want to maintain and our guests that come to our city love the fact that we're so hospitable. All the rodeo folks that are coming in now are talking about our wonderful city and the culture that we have. But with all these 20, 30, 50,000 people that are projected to come, if we don't have the, a strong law enforcement to continue to protect and maintain what we have here, I think we could get into some trouble. So I want to really give voice that we do get the new police station that's long overdue, plus also the funds for the new manpower that we're going to need there as well. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tim Davenport Herbst, and I'm here representing the West Texas Organizing Strategy, WTOS. We have been involved with the work on MLK and in organizing with the people there, and I'm not going to take up a whole lot more of your time, but I want to say that WTOS has been deeply involved with other renovation programs, uh, uh, making Blackshear uh, a better place, and we are fully behind the process of renewing the community and the neighborhood around Martin Luther King Avenue. So thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Great, I'll add him. <coughs> so these, these meetings are kind of informal in that I can't tell you how long it's going to last. I can't tell you uh, uh, exactly what we're going to talk about. And so it, it's really, it's for y'all. And it's for anything that, that, that y'all would like to speak to or, or have staff follow up with you and, and, and find out more information on. And so... Um, I just want to make sure that nobody leaves here without um, a concern of theirs being spoken to. And so um, we're, we're happy to, um, to stay as long as needed, and we're also glad to uh, adjourn and let you all loose to the rest of your evening if everybody has uh, had their voice heard. So um, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Come on up. Uh, my name is Jim Ryan, and I've been attending these things for a while. First thing I'd like to say is I'm just <coughs> tickled pink to see a room full of people. There have been years when Mr. Turner and I would show up, and staff would be there, and they'd kind of look at us and say, well, what's on your mind? 
because as soon as we're done with you, we're done, we're all going home. And yes, then this is one heck of a turnout. I do have some issues. Uh, the MLK part, now, earlier you were showing a list of street projects uh, by number and listing MLK. Down there about number 100, I notice you've got renovations to old Ballinger Highway from uh, North Bell Street out to Pruitt Drive. That would be on the way out to the dump. Now, could you tell me, I know it's been on there for a while, and I know I've been tooting the horn about this for a few years. What number in that prioritized list would be a repair of Bell Street from Pulliam Street down to Concho Street or, or the Bell Street Crossing? Where, where the new Rio Concho Sports Center is. And Mr. Ryan, thanks for your question. question. The list of streets that you see are uh, not in um, prior prioritized order. They are in order by the traffic volume that okay. they carry. So as I mentioned when we started talking about MLK, what we're going to begin soon is an overall evaluation of all of our roadways in San Angelo uh, through a non-destructive testing process. We can um, determine with pretty good certainty what the rate of decline of our existing roadways is, all the way from our new roads to the ones that we've been doing maintenance on, seal coat, just trying to limp along until we can rebuild the thing. So what we hope to get out of this study is a plan that gives us, say, a five or a seven year plan to get our streets to a certain condition across the board. That's going to mean that some of them need a seal coat every eight years. It's going to mean that some of them are going to need a mill and overlay. It's going to mean that other ones need full reconstruction. And undoubtedly, there are some of them that are at that point right now. We know. We don't know what the cost of that is going to be. When we combine all those things together and the maintenance effort that it's going to take to maintain what we have, that's the bottom bottom line. That's the bottom dollar right there. And until we get to that point, we can't tell you exactly where Bell Street or some of these other streets will be on the list. Um, just the shape that it's in and the amount of maintenance that we apply to it and the amount of traffic that drives on it, Bell Street from the river north is pretty close to the top of the list. I've got to agree with you. You go from the river south, and you're talking, uh, well, smooth as the proverbial baby's butt, and you get north of that river, and it's uh, San Angelo's gift to auto alignment shops. Right. <laughs> Back in uh, <laughs> It's really bad window-rattling pavement. Uh, right. Uh, one one follow-up there, what was our city's budget on on street maintenance last year? And, and mind you, I'm, I'm talking about not new streets, but street repair and maintenance, and certainly not including, like, text dot routes. Well, probably we didn't pay for things like Houston Heart and uh, Bryant Raceway anyway. Mike so, and Morgan uh, might have how, how much did we spend roughly last year on street maintenance? Mike and Morgan may have to help me out a little bit on the overall figure. I can tell you what we spent on seal coat maintenance last year. I can't tell you what we spent on potholes and level ups and crack seal and those types of activities. We spent about six hundred seventy thousand um, dollars for seal coat last year. Mm -hmm. And that got us about 25% of what we needed to do last year. What's the rest of this <clears throat> so this year, again, after the jumping up and down that, that, that I did and other staff did at the council meetings last year, because, because there is such a great need to increase that maintenance <coughs> effort, the city council approved three times the amount of funding for seal coat maintenance this year. So that's going to go a long way. And we've been spending a lot of time driving the streets, talking to the guys that are out there working on the roads every day. 
uh, trying to determine what the problems, problem areas are, where we can apply this and get the best use of those dollars. So what we'd like to do, if you can imagine the entire city as in the shape of a pie and all the streets are, are within that, we used to do one-eighth. If you divided that up into eight pieces, we used to do one-eighth of that every year. And a seal coat will last about seven or eight years, mm -hmm. ten years, depending on the street and the conditions. Well, we've gotten away from that. We're on about a 30-year rotation now. So we're trying to concentrate just on the major roadways, the roads that people travel the most, trying to salvage what we can um, until we get to the next step and we can apply more major maintenance or reconstruction to those roads. So what we're trying to do is get back into that rotation on the maintenance side. Um, undoubtedly, as you your roads continue to fall apart, your maintenance effort increases. So you have to have a balancing act there. You can't have, ma you can't have new roads without the proper maintenance. You cannot get the expected useful life out of them. So uh, we hope to have some answers fairly quickly on what the priorities are and um, how we are going to begin addressing those. But we're hard at work on that right now. Now, <coughs> this may be appropriate more to Mr. Dane, but uh, would it be safe to say that our projected expenditure on street repair for this coming year is in the neighborhood of one and a half to two mil? It's close to that. The, the objective during the last budget cycle was to take that $600,000 figure and move it up because Clint, Clinton was telling us we'd cut that pie into too many pieces and we couldn't get around. And so uh, council did add one million and change, I think it was a million and 60 or 80, hmm. uh, to that 600,000 so that those streets could be maintained at a higher level. And uh, uh, as a side note, council's under tremendous pressure to reduce the tax rate. And so they took a chance Instead of reducing the, they, they reduced the tax rate a little bit. They took a chance, instead of reducing it three more cents, to put that money into streets. So they get, they take a lot of heat, a lot of nasty comments. If you believe they did the right thing, I wish you'd tell them, give them a little pat on the back, and say, we appreciate you trying to fix our streets. Because they took a chance doing that and uh, kind of stuck their necks out a little bit saying we, we need to maintain these at a higher level. So uh, let them know what your needs are, but, but when they move, in your opinion, in the right direction, uh, stick, stick your hand out there and give them a little pat on the back because they take a lot of heat. Some people can't find anything right about what they do, but they're, they're working hard to try to solve these problems. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Jim. Yes, one and a half to two million. Okay. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, I'm going to digress just a little bit from strict capital improvement, but on the other hand, it's an option that I'm not sure a lot of people know that we have, and I think it might be coming up on the radar screen soon enough. There is a way to almost double the amount that we spend on street maintenance and not raise our taxes a penny and that would be a state sanctioned move to uh, to take part of our sales tax money our half cent sales tax money dedicate an eighth of a cent of it to a street maintenance fund that would have to be approved by voters but that council would have to take enough heat to put that before the voters, which they have yet to do. But at our current sales tax revenue, that would be the high side of a million and a half this year under projections close to two million additional out of taxes we already pay. So those of you who may not know about that, Here's some more heat you can put on your council members, or for that matter, potential council members. This is a really sufficient, this is a really significant fund of potential street repair money that I think more people ought to be aware of. 
At any rate, thank you all very much, and it's great to see this kind of turnout for a very, very significant event. Thank you all for coming. We appreciate your comments. Come on up if you if there's something you'd like us to hear. <clears throat> Yes, my name is Jim Turner, uh, and addressing Fort Concho and some of the similar venues like that, that ties in very nicely with something that was in addressed at the last council meeting, which is the hotel occupancy tax money, and because it's doing so well, that may be an option to help fund projects at places like Fort Concho. Can't be used on streets, can't be used for salaries, but on projects that do bring in tourism, support hotel industry and so on, that is one of the options for that type of money. And if you think that Fort Concho could benefit from that, let your council people know about that also. And also some of the other venues that do attract people here that are in need of repair, maintenance, upgrade, and so on. Right now we have an unexpected increase because of the oil boom and so on in this hotel occupancy tax, probably not gonna last. This might be a good time to use some of that for something that is gonna keep people coming here. Thank you. We appreciate you being here. We want to hear from you. If you'd like, there's something you'd like us to hear, you're welcome. Morgan, do you have anything else? Do you have, are you done? I'm done, yeah. Well, what we want you to know, yeah, it looks like we've got to take her. Uh, yeah, my name is Art Elkins, and uh, with Mr. Ryan up here, I second his emotion. Uh, everything that he said, uh, that's what I was going to talk about. And I'd like to add one, uh, two extra things. One is the stabilization of the uh, river from Rio Concho Manor all the way through Bell Street. Uh, I'd like to know what the status is on that. And also... <coughs> The evening council meetings. Uh, you see the crowd here now. I've been to several meetings down here throughout the years, and I've never, <coughs> excuse me, I've never seen this many people. So keep that in mind, and maybe start having some, even on a trial basis. You know, a couple months, three months, twice a month. You may get crowds like this. All right, we'll pass that along to council. Thank you for your comments. If there's nobody else, what we do want you to know is how much we appreciate you taking time out of your evening to be here. Uh, we do work for you. At a time when citizens sometimes feel disconnected from their government, we believe that local government is the most accessible government we have. Uh, and we tried to remain accessible to you. Uh, you've got uh, representatives that are your neighbors. We've got one here tonight who cares about contact with uh, the people he represents. Um, the others feel the same way. They, they want to do a good job for you. So uh, let them know what your needs are. Do give them a pat on the back once in a while. They are trying to do a good job. Um, Thank you for your time, and uh, we'll hang around for a few minutes if you've got informal comments or uh, you want to chase us down with a question. We're here for you. You bet. Mr. Please. My name is Johnny Silvis, and I am not wearing a hat as a councilman this evening, but I'm wearing a hat as a taxpayer, and I, I truly 
appreciate you folks coming out, you know, and I know that you guys have many issues, many concerns. A lot of times it's not easy sitting up there, but you know what? I like to say that, hey, I'm no different than you. I'm no different than you. You know, I'm a taxpayer just like you are. So whatever we're, is happening out there, I mean, we're doing it to ourselves. But I just want to say that I represent this area, and excuse me for having something in my mouth, but uh, I'm going to give you my cell phone because I am all, I've got an open-door policy. My direct cell number, if you have, if those of you aren't comfortable enough to come up here, is 212-1452. 2121452. I would love to hear from you. I am uh, your spokesperson, your representative, whatever you want to call me, but I, I'm very much interested. I mean, uh, there's a lot of things that come to us, but uh, we're here, and uh, I do want to put in a plug for Bell Street. I, too, am, I hear from my wife every day. She works at Ethicon, and she's got to come down that road, and, uh, you know, it's rough, you know, and I've, I've I've been there, Jim. I know what you're talking about, and uh, we're we hear what you're saying. Uh, but again, uh, if you're not brave enough to come up here and let us know, by all means, please call me. Uh, you know, I've got op I've got big ears. I'm a good listener, and I will take your message to uh, some of the other <laughs> folks that sit sit up here with me. And uh, thank you again for coming out this evening. Two one two one four five two. Yes, ma'am. My wife also drives Bell Street every day, and so I get to hear about the latest condition update on Bell Street. So, thank you for being here. Uh, stay in touch with your city government. Thank you. <laughs>